Half of all the fruit, vegetables, and nuts in the United States are produced here in California's Central Valley. Unfortunately, the worst drought in California's history currently threatens the agricultural sector. It's, it's just depression. You know, to see something that, that you've worked so hard to, to grow and build, and you know, that years ago was a, was a good business. If we can't water, like say, these trees, we're gonna lose them, it's not easy to come back. At that point, I just give up. All of the people that work with us will be without a job. There's a lot of people that are distressed in the community in terms of not being able to support their families, number one, but number two, not even being able to uh, provide for their families in terms of food. In Farmersville, a small agricultural community dating back to the 1850s, Pastor Venavita says that the need for food help has increased from around 40 to 340 families in two years. The need is great. And we've gotten up to about 340 families every other week. So a lot of people that are out of work, and you can, if you can see, there's a lot of seniors that come also. Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh, also known as the rickshaw capital of the world. Soon it might be known as the capital of climate refugees. Most of them will end up in one of the many slums, which are shattering the city. Bangladesh is possibly the most vulnerable country in terms of climate change. We have done analysis for the whole of the country, and we found right now the coastal belt is the most vulnerable one. Kutubdiapara is an informal settlement named after the displaced people from the island Kutubdia. Surely I want to say I'm a climate refugee. I was in Kutubdia and had a nice family there. I know very well. Erosion, saline water, sea level rising, and cyclone destroyed all our worldly goods. I work this dry fish field six months a year and earn only $1.20 a day. I don't send my children to school because I have no money, I have no food, and whatnot. A lurking hazard is salinity intrusion. In Kintubdia, saline water has already destroyed two-thirds of agricultural land limited inland fishing and drinking water supply. In 100 years time, maybe one fourth to maybe one third of the country would become as saline as the sea. Result could be displacement and out migration. How much of the country would be affected as the coastline moves in, I would say about one third here. But this intervening land would have dikes to protect it against submergence but we cannot fight with salinity. It is hard to imagine a world with no light switches, no sockets to plug in your computer, or having to walk 30 kilometers to charge your mobile. But the fact is that one in five people in the world have no access to electricity. It is no surprise that most of these people live in developing countries. Imagine being 90 years old and going to bed at night with just a burning wooden log as your light source. My mother-in-law is fairly young, she's above 90. Now 90 in darkness is, is simply bad and come in the bedroom with some burning wood. She could easily burn in the bed. The good news is that there are good and sustainable solutions for Africa's electricity problem. Africa's abundance of sunshine and ever-increasing population are the key to a rapidly growing market for solar power on the continent. For Joseph's family in Akuru, Kenya, the solution was a home solar system from the Norwegian company Brightalight. We have a solar panel, which is giving us all that much power enough for our light, enough for kids to do their homework, of course enough for security. We uh, recharge our phones, and of course we have the television. In African countries, 600 million people have no access to the central grid. Homemade kerosene lamps and open fires are often the only sources of energy. The indoor pollution from these sources ranks among the worst health risks facing the poor. To have a solar kiosk in the community is a good demo to the people. Like a solar kiosk is powered by panels. Inside the kiosk, there is a TV. 
there is phone charging, there is photocopy. They don't think about anything else. It's all about electricity. So bringing solar energy as a solution to them, it, it was a big impact to the people. In Kitonyoni, Kenya, the establishment of a solar-based mini-grid has transformed the old sleepy village center into a vibrant meeting point with flourishing businesses. The village, when we came in here, was almost dying. Now the village is booming. The number of buildings have doubled. Access to electricity in the village has also benefited women. It has improved the women's lives. For example, mine, I think it has improved. Because when there was no electricity, I used to stay at home. But now there is electricity, I work. Sometimes I could have no money to buy to pay school fees for my kids. Now I use the electricity to blow dry the air, and then I get money. I feel happy. Mm. The majority of the population in East Africa have their livelihood in the agricultural sector. Nevertheless, a large proportion of the population live in chronic hunger and malnutrition. The good news is that there are tremendous opportunities to expand the area and the irrigation, thus a huge potential to increase food production. Patrick is a typical small hole farmer in Kenya. For years, he has struggled with unreliable rainfall and failing crops. But now, life is about to take a new turn. A year ago, he invested in an irrigation system from Sun Culture, combining solar energy pump with drip irrigation. The irrigation kit has given me a lot of impact, simply because I'm not looking for the weather. When the weather is dry, is when I'm earning. When the rain is coming, I saw rainwater in my tank. Immediately I got solar pump. I started getting three harvests per one year. Before, I used to get just one harvest during the rainy season. Access to irrigation and increased profits have motivated farmers to experiment with new plant cultures with high earnings and move from subsistence farming to commercial operation. In fact, I want to specialize with the onions, which is very rare in our area. The part of the farm which I have irrigation, I've done one acre, but I'm soon extending it to two to three acres. African farmers that are able to move away from not just costly, but environmentally destructive petrol and diesel powered pumps by simply making the shift to a solar powered pump, they save themselves tons of money, but they're also contributing to a healthier environment, and that helps everyone. Wendy lives in Kitonyoni. She is in her last year of primary school and works hard to achieve good results, so one day she can get a good job and help her parents. Her father bought a rechargeable lamp, which she charges at the solar power station in the village. The lamp gives the kids more time and better light to do homework in the evenings. I was using uh, 600 per, per month on kerosene, but uh, when they brought this solar plant, I am using only 400 on charging the battery. There is a difference of 200 Kenya shillings. The school also received access to electricity after Energy for Development came to Kitonyoni and installed a solar-based mini-grid. We did not have electricity. We literally used to strain because the syllabus is quite big. But now we have extra time. Since we, uh, we began using the light, the performance has really gone up because uh, the teachers can use the lights in the morning, they can also remain in the evening. Future generations, people can be uh, well set because they will be learned. came from another place where there was no access to electricity. Imagine using a torch in that phone to deliver. You are alone, no other source of energy. So you, it was very challenging because you could not even see what you are doing very well. Today, these local health clinics are among the lucky ones who have gained access to solar energy. Near Caliro Health Clinic received a solar suitcase developed by We Care Solar, which contains solar lamps, mobile charger, and a futile monitor. Nowadays, we can enjoy our work because we can deliver the women in a full light. The Nyakaliro Clinic has tripled the number of birds since they got light in the delivery room. 
That means far fewer patients need to travel a bumpy road to the regional hospital in Sangarema to get the treatment they need. Elizabeth came to Sangarema District Hospital because the local hospital did not have electricity and adequate equipment that could be used to handle abnormal labor conditions. It's more than 50 kilometers from my village hospital to here Sangarema Hospital. I came by motorbike. I was feeling very painful because the road was very rough. My dream is that one day the the hospital will not run shortage of electricity so that mothers can deliver without darkness.